Robert Spencer here for Jihad Watch, a program of the David Horowitz Freedom Center and for the Center for Security Policy. It has now come to light that as director of the FBI, Robert Mueller, who is currently the special counsel looking for any dirt he can find on President Trump, presided over the 2012 removal of all counter-terror training materials that made any mention of Islam and Jihad in connection with terrorism. Since then, our law enforcement and intelligence officials have been blundering along in self-imposed darkness about the motivating ideology behind the Jihad threat. Now this turns out to be Robert Mueller's doing. In February 2012, the Obama administration purged more than a thousand documents and presentations from counter-terror training material for the FBI and other agencies. This material was discarded at the demand of Muslim groups which had deemed it inaccurate or offensive to Muslims. Now this purge was several years in the making and I myself was inadvertently the one who touched it off. In August 2010, I gave a talk on Islam and Jihad to the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force, one of many such talks I gave to government agencies and military groups in those years. Now, while some had counseled me to keep these talks quiet so as to avoid attracting the ire of the Hamas-linked Council on American-Islamic Relations, or CARE, the possibility of that pressure seemed to me to make it all the more important to announce that I had been there, so as to show that the U.S. government was not going to take dictation from a group linked to Hamas and the Muslim Brotherhood. As it turned out, however, those who had urged silence were correct for the Obama administration was indeed disposed to take dictation from CARE. CARE sent a series of letters to Mueller and others demanding that I be dropped as a counter-terror trainer, and the organization even started a coalition echoing the demand, and Jesse Jackson and other leftist luminaries joined it. At the FBI, Mueller made no public comment on CARE's demand, and so it initially appeared that CARE's effort had failed. But I was never again invited to provide counter-terror training for any government agency after having done so fairly regularly for the previous five years. CARE's campaign to keep me from taking part in counter-terror training was of course not personal. They targeted me simply because I told the truth, just as they would target anyone else who dared to do so. Although Mueller was publicly silent, now we know that he was not unresponsive, and the Islamic supremacists and their leftist allies did not give up. In the summer and fall of 2011, the online tech journal Wired published several exposés by the far-left journalist Spencer Ackerman, who took the FBI to task for training material that spoke forthrightly and truthfully about the nature and magnitude of the jihad threat. In a typical sally from one of these exposés, Ackerman condemned the training material for intimating that mainstream American Muslims were, quote, likely to be terrorist sympathizers. Now certainly all the mainstream Muslim organizations condemn Al-Qaeda and 9-11. However, some of the foremost of those organizations, such as ISNA, MAS, ICNA, the MSA, CARE, and others, have links of various kinds to Hamas and the Muslim Brotherhood. A mainstream Muslim spokesman in the U.S., Ground Zero Mosque Imam Faisal Abdul Rauf, refused to condemn Hamas until it became too politically damaging for him not to do so. CARE's Nihad Awad openly declared his support for Hamas in 1994. Other mainstream Muslim spokesmen in the U.S., such as Obama's ambassador to the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, Rashad Hussein, and media gadfly Hussein Ibish, have praised and defended Sami al Aryan, the confessed leader of yet another jihad terror group, Palestinian Islamic Jihad. Do these men and organizations represent a tiny minority of extremists that actually does not express the opinions of the broad mainstream of Muslims in this country? Maybe, but there's simply no counterparts, no individuals of comparable influence or groups of comparable size that have not expressed sympathy for some Islamic terror group. Nonetheless, in the face of Ackerman's reports, the FBI went into full retreat. In September 2011, it announced that it was dropping one of the programs that Ackerman had zeroed in on. Then, on October 19, 2011, Farhana Kara of Muslim Advocates, who had complained for years about supposed Muslim profiling and entrapment, sent a letter to John Brennan, who was then the assistant to the President on National Security for Homeland Security and Counterterrorism. The letter was signed not just by Kara, but by the leaders of virtually all the significant Islamic groups in the U.S., 
57 Muslim, Arab, and South Asian organizations, many again with ties to Hamas and the Muslim Brotherhood, including CARE, the Islamic Society of North America, the Muslim American Society, the Islamic Circle of North America, Islamic Relief, USA, and the Muslim Public Affairs Council. The letter denounced what it characterized as U.S. government agencies' use of biased, false, and highly offensive training materials about Muslims and Islam. It criticized the FBI's use of biased experts and training materials. Kara complained that my books could be found in the FBI's library at the FBI Training Academy in Quantico, Virginia, that a reading list accompanying a PowerPoint presentation by the FBI's Law Enforcement Communications Unit recommended my book The Truth About Muhammad, and that in July 2010 I presented a two-hour seminar on the belief system of Islamic jihadists to the Joint Terrorism Task Force in Tidewater, Virginia, and presented a similar lecture to the U.S. Attorney's Anti-Terrorism Advisory Council, which is co-hosted by the FBI's Norfolk Field Office. Now these were supposed to be terrible things because I was supposed to be bigoted and hateful, but many of the examples Kara adduced of bigoted and distorted materials involved statements that were not actually bigoted and distorted at all, but simply accurate. What was distorted was Kara's representation of them. For instance, Kara stated this, a 2006 FBI intelligence report stating that individuals who convert to Islam are on the path to becoming homegrown Islamic extremists if they exhibit any of the following behavior, wearing traditional Muslim attire, growing facial hair, frequent attendance at a mosque or a prayer group, travel to a Muslim country, increased activity in a pro-Muslim social group or political cause. Now note, the FBI intelligence report that Kara purported to be describing did not actually say that converts to Islam were necessarily on the path to becoming extremists if they wore traditional Muslim attire, grew facial hair, and frequently attended a mosque. It simply included these behaviors among a list of 14 indicators to identify an individual going through the radicalization process. Others included travel without obvious source of funds, suspicious purchases of bomb-making paraphernalia or weapons, large transfer of funds from or to overseas, and formation of operational cells. Kara selectively quoted and misrepresented the list to give the impression that the FBI was saying that devout observance of Islam led inevitably and in every case to extremism. Despite the factual accuracy of the material about which they were complaining, the Muslim groups signing the letter demanded that the task force purge all federal government trainings of materials of these supposedly biased materials and implement a mandatory retraining program for FBI agents, U.S. Army officers, and all federal, state, and local law enforcement who have been subjected to biased training. They asked for more as well to ensure that all law enforcement officials would learn about Islam and Jihad only what the signatories to this letter wanted them to learn. Brennan immediately complied. Numerous books and presentations that gave a perfectly accurate view of Islam and Jihad were purged. But it wasn't just Brennan. Now we know that it was Mueller all along. Both Brennan and Mueller, of course, are part of the same Washington establishment that has wholeheartedly endorsed the idea that honest analysis of jihadis' motives is Islamophobia. The longer our military and intelligence apparatus subscribes to this view, the worse off we will be. I'm Robert Spencer.